Welcome to Inspirations, a podcast where we discuss everything relevant to the Christian life. Now here is your host, Jay Spurlock. I want to talk about journaling today. I want to talk about the the concept of the empower in simply writing out the things that are in our minds on our heart and this has really become uh this has come apparent to me of late um this past few weeks i really have been just uh overwhelmed by a few things and uh, haven't had the time to really sit down on a consistent basis and write out like i usually do write out the things that come to mind or that have been unsettling to me or i feel like has tugged at my heart or is really bothering me and just getting those on paper so i really haven't been able to do that as much lately and i also during this uh, last few weeks really felt overwhelmed I've felt cluttered, I've felt this wave of confusion, a wave of just so much on my mind and heart, uh, you know, sleeping wise, I haven't slept as well, and, and you know, and that, that's just, just the thing that just continues to kind of domino effect, and uh, the less and less sleep, you're tired, you're not as, to say, on your best, I guess to say, but, uh, which then just triggers of so many other things in my life when I feel like I'm not capable of doing the things that I, I wish to do or I feel like the Lord calls me to do, which is, is tough is tough to uh, swallow. But, you know, I think sometimes also that you come to these points in your life that you, you have to kind of survey and take, you have to acknowledge it. And you have to say, this is what it is. It is what it is. And being able to really just be still and know and reflect and take the time to really just listen to your heart, listen to all the crazy things in your mind and sort through those things and really just say, what's the reality of this? Is these things, are they true? Are they even worthy of, of taking room in my head and my heart and what am I going to do with this and so I really I was kind of debating on what to share in this episode and I, I just it came to me I'm like I, I want to share been meaning about this I, I talked a little bit about a gratitude journal how that really helped me um, it's a great tool to use to uh, keep your mind just kind of in this state of gratitude in a way at least daily trying to set aside time and really seeing the things that you are possibly overseeing the blessings and not necessarily the material things but just the things that are eternal and so I hope if you have started that I really hope that has uh, uh, really lifted your spirits because gratitude is very powerful but I also want to talk about just the idea of writing and journaling because here's what I've learned is you know the Bible says not to keep records of wrong we are so it's so easy to do in a way but what I've learned what I've come to see is I am constantly you know uh, I'm, I'm really taking this mindset of not keeping these records especially of wrong and and trying to and try not to allow them to really take space in my heart or whatever. If someone says something, someone doesn't do something, someone says something of, uh, about me or to me, I try to, I really have tried to eliminate and, and just kind of go on about my day. And what that has done is, you know, really, I think, kind of swept it under a rug. And I know when I was journaling and stuff, those things would come to mind and I could get those on paper. And I always felt like it's just the, I don't know if it's a, a tool of the mind or what, but I felt like, okay, I've got those things out now and they're on paper and they're just for me. They're not, I don't have to share them with anybody. It's not like I'm writing a record of things that people have done to me or wronged me just to have that on them, but it's more of a tool to help me free myself and get that out and express that where it doesn't remain inside. Because what I've noticed is I can go three or four weeks and just things continue to pile up and I will 
have this certain energy towards people and I don't even know why and it really <laughs> bothers me because uh, if someone was to ask me like what what is, what is your deal what is what is what did I do to you I honestly this is maybe just a, a J thing but I honestly can say sometimes that I don't know I just have this this all this stuff I can't tell you exactly what it is but I just know is a certain energy and 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 really that to to be to to say that to somebody there there really is not going to be any progress in that when you just say I don't know I don't know why and a person's like well I mean I would like to make this right and I'm just like well I can't I mean at this point I feel like my mind's just overwhelmed and and here I am and I'm just like you know, that we are meant to really just put things down and express those in in one way or the other. And, you know, sometimes I feel bad because I'm like, am I just sitting here writing a journal of the things I've been wrong? Also, how you have wronged others. Because we all know we do it. And if you carry around that guilt towards a person, it can also carry a certain uh, energy. And they might not even remember it, but you do. So therefore, you, the really, the problem is with you again. And you're, it's holding you captive and that, and those ideas and those words of expression are really holding you down and holding you back. And so one of the things in, in therapy, I know when I had a couple of weeks where I couldn't go to therapy as well as the things at work or, or other obligations. And usually I go weekly and I could really tell that I was in a kind of a, a season of really a, just a lot of things in my mind and my heart. It just was kind of overwhelming and it was uh, heavy. And and I know, I remember the first time I went back to therapy after, I was just like, I really didn't even want to go for some reason. And, you know, it usually starts with how you doing and, you know, I'm fine, I'm fine. And, but really, I know I'm not. And then I'm just like, so what's going on? What's bothering you? I don't know. You know, I can go back and think about the weeks and really that's probably what I need to do. But what has happened is I haven't taken the time during these weeks to truly attend to the things that have come up inside me or the things that I have experienced and good or bad and it has caught up with me so being mindful of that and being able to be honest and transparent with yourself is difficult but it is rewarding because I've just you know recently I've made a a, a pledge that I've got to, I know I carry so many things in my heart. I feel things at a deep level. I don't know why exactly, but I have to, if I carry those things around, I can, I can, I'm constantly overwhelmed by sometimes some just darkness because of the things that the darkness that have been shared with me or I've seen uh, or I know the pain and suffering that is around me and I know how that feels. So I get, it carries me even deeper into into darkness. So, um, and then you know we need to know the things to celebrate as well. And that's another thing that I really struggle at doing is celebrating those times. And that the Lord gives us those things to celebrate. And it's almost like I feel bad when I do. Um, so I just don't. And that is that's not. I don't really think that's healthy. So this is the things that that come to mind when I'm thinking of this stuff and. So I really, if you're feeling overwhelmed or you really feel like you're stuck, I wanted to just do this episode on encouraging you. You know, maybe I've talked to a couple of people I've shared this with and they have come back and told me just how great or how, how helpful this has been because they were literally laid down and all this stuff would just come to mind and they couldn't shut it off and they were losing sleep. And they're like, I just keep this journal beside my bed before I go to bed, and I just put everything out there. And I put it in that book, in our journal. And some days it's more than others, and some days it's a few words. So I really think we are meant to do that. You know, I think about the people in the Bible, and and David especially, you know, some of his songs and and prayers are really deep. and, And I think that he had to get those out. Like, he had to express those or they were going to really eat away at him and kill his spirit. So I want to encourage you, you know, to really think about this. And and if you're in a, a season where uh, you have 
maybe you already journal or something, then um, maybe tell a friend about it. You know, encourage them that this is what I've been doing and this has really helped me. Or if that person comes to a uh, person comes to you for for advice or or just to, for you to listen. You know, you can you can give them a little advice of, hey, you know, uh, I think writing this stuff out and getting it out of your system and out of your heart on a consistent basis would be healthy. You know, we don't have to share those things with anybody. You can have that to yourself. But even when I say it out loud, I still don't think it's to me, and this just may be me personally, like it doesn't seem like it's good. It's because I'm hearing it. <laughs> sounds really but what I'm saying then I'm hearing but when I write it out I feel like I can get it completely out of my system and removed and onto something else and it's not a part of me anymore now I can go back here's another thing is I can go back and I can take inventory and take record of the things that are really this is what I was feeling during this time and maybe this is a problem for me maybe this is something that I struggled with. It was a time of loss or a time of a conflict at work or, or, or at home or with your best friend or whatever that may be. And you can say this this is this is what's causing this or this may be what's causing this is and I need to, to hold that space and I need to withdraw a little bit from that and check in with myself and, and know that I can't hold it all in and I have to I have to share it. We have to share our burdens and a lot of times our culture really encourages us to go about things alone and be individuals and and really all that does is, you know, those people that don't have someone to share with, I think writing it out and journaling can be one of the most powerful methods that you that you can do at all times. And uh if you would like a journal, uh, so one thing my ministry does, I like giving people journals and encouraging them and giving them somewhere to record their thoughts. You can also buy them anywhere. Um, but I think I think it's important to have them in a collection where you can you, you have a go-to place uh, and it's consistent and you can keep records and you can look back on it and reflect and, and just go back and think about maybe it was a good time and, and in a time of darkness you need some light and you can remember like this is what I was seeing and, and it, it brings that light back so uh, have a great week and thanks so for our quest to reflect I want you to ask yourself this question what do I need to ask Jesus and if nothing comes to mind I want to ask you why why do you not have anything to ask Jesus? You know, some of the best conversations or relationships are when two people are in a relationship, they they begin and they stay curious about their partner or their spouse or the other person in their relationship. They ask some questions. And to, in order to have a relationship with Jesus, I think that's essential. We don't have all the answers. I'm not saying that you're going to get all the answers, but I think it's good for us to ask questions to show that we're curious because this world asks questions of us every day. And yet many times we don't think to ask Jesus questions. And, and here's the best part. When you ask a question, it puts you in a posture to listen. And I think that's where, if you're having trouble hearing God, maybe it's because you haven't asked a question for him to say anything. Or you are not in a posture to listen, in a silence to hear him. So, this week, in your quiet time, whenever that may be, really sit and think and ask God to reveal it. God, I don't know what to ask you. All I know usually is I just have these things that I need you to tend to or to do. But this time I want to ask you, I want to have questions for you. I don't know what they are. Can you help reveal those questions to me so that you can share the answers with me or insight that you have so we can build a better and deeper relationship through this? Thanks. So for this week's Check It Out, 
I thought it was only fitting. You know, I like to ask questions a lot, if you haven't noticed. I really feel like some of the best um, therapy, some of the best conversation, some of the best coaching, some of the best insight is found when we're asked questions from others. And not necessarily to find all the answers, but to just put us on a quest in the question and put us on a quest and a journey to find that solution. And in that solution, we really might find a lot of other things. And that's the key in asking questions. But to be someone that asks questions, a lot of times it takes a, a curious person. It takes a curious heart. And often we become just so the the easy route is not to be curious and just to be fed information and let it be. But I wanted to encourage you. I wanted you to check out this website, um, gotquestions.org. And there's a lot of questions on there with biblical responses for, uh, backed by verses. But, you know, some of them, I, I searched the top 20 uh, just a f- few minutes ago, and some of them were, what, is, what does the Bible say about women being pastors or women in the church? What does the Bible say about homosexuality? Is it a sin? What does the Bible say about tattoos? Once saved, are you always saved? What is the Christian view of suicide? What is the importance of Christian baptism? What does the Bible say about drinking alcohol? What does the Bible say about divorce? That's just a few of them. And and then you can, you have these, you may be getting a conversation with a friend and someone that is very early in their faith or have questions, the whole thing about a God, this whole theistic idea of a God of, of, is there one, does he exist? Does God exist? That's one of the questions on there. And they give you biblical insight on that. But I want to caution you because I want Anytime that we have a conversation, we're looking for answers. We need to understand that, yes, the Bible gives, leads us in a path to those answers, but yet sometimes we can't get the concrete answer. And I want you to also not use this as ammo. We don't go searching for answers to condemn others and to judge others. I really don't think that's the case, but... I think it is also important that we are knowledgeable and we have insight on what the Bible says about certain topics that maybe we will be asked or we come in contact with others that may be facing those questions. So uh, it's a wonderful resource and I just wanted to uh, share it with y'all and uh, if it does anything, uh, you know, hopefully it'll lead you to reading more into it and, 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 fact check their answers and and look into the scriptures that they give and and i think any way any method that gets us into the bible to search for ourselves and to search for answers and to search scripture is a wonderful thing and can only bring us closer to to the truth that is found in jesus and god thanks Thank you for listening to the Inspirations Podcast. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to check in again every other Monday for a new episode and new content. Thanks. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.